Equator is a software synth that has been specifically designed by Rolly for multidimensional expression. To spiral back to the metaphor of primitive and highly developed alien life forms having conversations, Equator and the Seaboard come from the same planet and can seamlessly have these elaborate and deep conversations with each other. I've used a lot of different soft synths and I was impressed with Equator right off the bat, especially with the emulations of stringed instruments in conjunction with the five dimensions of touch. For example, uh, MIDI guitars are notoriously fake sounding, but as you play around with the different presets, you'll find the complete opposite to be true. Check out patch number eight, which is called Guitar Overdrive Mono Lead. The presets on Equator have been specifically designed to interplay with the five dimensions of touch, and you'll find a really nice mix of synthesized and acoustic sounds. Later on in the course, we'll take a closer look at synthesis and how all the different parts of Equator work. But to start off, let's open it up and take a look around. Launch Equator as a standalone application for now. Equator uses a combination of wavetable, FM, subtractive, and multi-sampled synthesis in different combinations. Looking at the synth itself, we can see what's happening. I'm gonna be using patch 110 glass dome bells to showcase what's happening here. The top half of Equator is showing the synth panel where the sounds themselves are being generated, and the bottom half is the modulation panel, which is how the sounds are being shaped. On the upper left-hand side of the interface, you can see the two samples used to create parts of the sound. I can turn them on and off by clicking on the icon on the top left corner of each module. Here we have a sample of a glockenspiel and another called warm large strings. We can switch out other samples by clicking on the arrow right of each sample's title. The sample then runs through its own dedicated filter, which you can swap in and out for another filter or turn on and off like so. And you can hear the sound change as I click around in this area. <laughs> Moving over to the right, we have three oscillators. Right now we have three sine waves selected, each with slightly different settings. Similar to the samples, we can swap out the different waves, tweak parameters, and turn each oscillator on and off. On the far right side, we have the FM tool, which isn't generating sounds itself, but does allow you to set the frequency of one oscillator to modulate the frequency of another. Largely, this will affect the timbre or tone of the sounds. There are only four configurations for you to choose from, so if you don't know much about FM synthesis, fear not, for the possibilities are limited. Lastly, we have a noise generator and two final filters. To the right of the filters, we have an audio effects chain, which includes a bit crusher, distortion, EQ, chorus, delay, and reverb. This icon here to the left of each title turns that effect on and off. On the bottom half of Equator, we're seeing how these sound sources are being shaped and processed. Each time we see a yellow dot in one of the modules, it means that something has been mapped to control something else in Equator. And as we move through the section, we'll see this in action. On the left, we see the rise controls, which associate with the identical sliders and XY pad on your seaboard. We'll take a closer look at how these affect the levels of expression and how to map and adjust them later on in the course. As I click on the different controls here, you can see that different parts of the synth light up yellow, indicating to me which parameters are mapped to them. Moving to the right, we see the five dimensions of touch represented graphically. As I click through here, you'll see how each dimension is mapped to control other parts of Equator. For instance, slide is mapped to the cutoff and level of sample two, the mix level of filter one, and the depth B on the FM tool. As I slide up and down the key waves, you can see this modulation in real time. To the right are two LFOs, which stand for low frequency oscillators. And down below are five different envelopes, which are also mapped to other parts of Equator. If you check out the amp envelope here, you can see how the volume of the sound is being shaped when we strike a key. It's gonna rise quickly and decay almost as quickly to practically silence and sustain there.
Now when I strike a key, you can see this envelope in action on the level of oscillator 1 and 3 and sample 2. Much more on envelopes later on. On the very bottom, we see a representation of which note or notes are being played. This section, which is referred to as key tracking, can serve as yet another modulation control if you wish. A few other important things to know about are the icons which run along the top. In the middle, we have the name of the patch we're currently running. We can switch between them by clicking on the right and left arrows on either side of the title or navigate through them here on the C board. If you click on the title, you'll see a drop-down menu of the many presets available to you as well. This icon here will allow you to compare and contrast any changes you may have made on a preset with its default settings. Here we have a master volume setting for when you're running Equator as a standalone app. This is the MIDI panic button, which will remove any indefinitely sustained or stuck notes you may encounter. On the far right, you can access the settings for Equator and adjust the audio setup. If you're not getting audio out of Equator when it's running as a standalone app, this is probably where the issue is. Equator and its associated dashboard, both of which came in the download package with your Rise, are always being developed and tweaked. In order to make sure everything runs smoothly, make sure you have the most recent version of Equator and dashboard running on your computer. Sometimes synth interfaces like these can be intimidating at first glance, but hopefully that brief tour of Equator's many parts and how they are all connected makes more sense. In my opinion, Equator is pretty slick and easy to understand while still maintaining a high level of user control. At this point, I would suggest you take the time to browse through all of Equator's presets and watch the different parameters and mapping switch as you go. We'll speak more on how to properly audition sounds a bit later, but for now, just seeing how everything is connected will be very useful.